Israeli armored vehicles are now staging near the border with Gaza in anticipation of what Israel calls significant ground operations. The Israeli defense forces uh, are urging civilians in Gaza to evacuate their homes and head south ahead of a potential ground operation against Hamas. But the dense urban setting and growing humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip may pose greater challenges for any operation. And joining me now to talk about this, retired Major John Spencer. He's the chair of the Urban Warfare Studies at the Madison Policy Forum. Uh, Major, uh, he's also the author of uh, the book, uh, Connected Soldiers. Um, Major, uh, you know, we've been looking at the same live images of Gaza over the last couple of days. It is eerily quiet there. Uh, there are a lot of, I guess, uh, expectations that this might get going. Um, is it possible because of the intricacies, because of the dangers, because of how things can just go sideways in an urban combat type of situation, a lot of comparisons have been made to Fallujah and Iraq uh, during the Iraq war, that the Israelis perhaps have slowed things down a little bit and they're just taking extra care and uh, putting together their battle plans. What do you think? Well, I think they've been planning for this, the contingency of this operation for years. So I think that's a big difference from our operations in, you know, in Iraq and in other places where, where they're limited. Even in the second battle of Fallujah, we had six months to prepare. I think Israel has been preparing for this contingency although nobody wanted it to happen for years. Uh, and I think the better comparison is the 2017 battle of Mosul against ISIS, where 100,000 Iraqi security forces, not as trained as the IDF, but it, you know, nine months destroyed most of the city, 10,000 civilian casualties. Um, and once that close fight happens, and I think this is what we're potentially could see, I know there's been 250 targets executed today um, against Hamas military targets, but in order to enter and clear the urban areas, the stated Israeli mission um, to remove that Hamas military capability, that bombing will go to thousands of rounds per day in order to support the close fight that would have to happen. Right. And, and Major, I mean, as we're all waiting for this ground incursion to get started, I mean, it, it is worth reminding folks we have seen um, a massive amount of destruction inside Gaza from those strikes that has already taken place. We're already seeing um, the repercussions of that. But once this gets going, you have the presence of, of hospital patients. Uh, we saw some of this in a report from our Scott McLean earlier. There were doctors talking about how there are kids on ventilators. How are we supposed to move the kids? When you have hospital patients, you have potential hostages in an area, uh, foreign nationals, obviously, who can't get out of Gaza. How does all of that complicate the situation and, and that operation for the Israeli Defense Forces? Yeah, it absolutely uh, increases the complication of what targets you can and can't engage, protected populations, protected sites. Um, but the, the problem is that both sides have the legal obligation to do everything feasible to protect civilian life. It's not to say that if the hospital stays open that it's going to be destroyed. I mean, that that's just not, not true. You can't execute even the highest intensity, and we saw this in the Battle of Mosul, fights. Uh, and there was actually a major battle over the hospital in which the Iraqi security forces had to use white phosphorus, which became international uh, media attention, to cover the movement of a battalion attack where ISIS was using a hospital as one of their refuges. It is possible, but it increases the risk to much more civilian casualties if they stay in the environment when this battle actually starts. I mean, it has started. We're in the early phases of it. Yeah. And Hamas is going to use uh, civilians a as uh, human shields. I mean, that, that is part of the reason why they said they didn't want people leaving the northern part of Gaza. And uh, adding, adding to that complexity, you also have this uh, extensive tunnel system around Gaza. That, that's going to be a problem as well, I imagine. Absolutely. That, that's actually um, what we're seeing to me as a, a student of all major urban battles of history isn't a historical like it, this is, as you said, we've seen this before. But the levels of preparation, the decades of tunnels underneath Gaza City and others, it's not just you know, connecting a house to here. But I mean, they go deep and deep into the earth and there's bunkers and there's civilians and there's hostages. Uh, this significantly increases the difficulty, the, the combat in hell for anybody going in there. And just finally, Major, I mean, would you advise the Israelis at this point to conduct the large scale operation that everybody is anticipating, given all of the problems that can arise uh, with an urban combat environment? Might they get bogged down? Is that a concern that they need to be mindful of and plan for? 
So I've spent a lot of time actually, you know, to all militaries around the world studying how they approach urban warfare. I, I don't offer advice. I, I learn from them. Uh, I do yeah. do training. And one of the biggest forces in the world who's prepared for a con entering a contested environment like this is the IDF. But of course, there is no bloodless war. They'll take a lot of casualties, and I think they know that. All right, Major John Spencer, thank you very much for your time and expertise. We appreciate it.